it, you know, it's not been a great week for historical statues. We have talked about them in the past. We rather hoped and thought that maybe we wouldn't have to talk about them again. But we do. Thomas Guy, an 18th century bookseller who made his fortune by buying and selling shares in the indefensible slave trade, also happened to establish a rather famous hospital. His statue, quite naturally, stands there to this day, but perhaps for not much longer. The trust which runs the hospital has been accused of cultural vandalism after confirming plans to move the statue to a less prominent position and place a plaque explaining Guy's role in the slave trade. 75% of people who uh, were opposed to moving it, but uh, they're doing it anyway. But Thomas Guy isn't the only historical figure to face the ire of London's civic institutions. Now, Goldsmiths University is consulting on whether to remove statues of British naval hero Lord Nelson and the legendary explorer Sir Francis Drake. Andrew Doyle is the only person who could possibly have joined me to talk about it, and as you can see, he has. Um, we had a brilliant conversation, uh, which you kindly joined in, about reclaiming history. And what I said in the introduction there, I genuinely meant, I thought, you know, we might have grown up a bit and moved on from statues. Yes. <laughs> but Guy's Hospital. Well, this is the thing. I mean, everything has become politicised now, including the study of history and the way that we perceive history. It's interesting that you say, you know, we thought this might have gone away by now. I promise you this is not going away. And part of the reason it's not going away is activists have drawn up a hit list of statues throughout the country and they're going to keep going uh, until at least, if, if not a plaque is uh, erected next to the statue, they will be uh, toppled. In this case, uh, Guy's Hospital, the statue yeah. is being relocated. But what's very interesting is that, as the, the statistic you mentioned, uh, there was a public consultation about yeah, this. Yeah, 75%. Right. And, and this but is, we know better, don't we? Well, this is the problem, isn't it? It's that the decisions are being made irrespective of public opinion on yeah. this. We saw this a few weeks ago in, 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 in Tavistock with the statue of Francis Drake. Yes. And there, there was a similar consultation about whether a plaque should be erected next to that. Um, and a judgmental plaque, not just a sort of uh, historically uh, balanced. Sure. It, it was, it, they were using words like brutal and horrific yeah, yeah, yeah. and that kind of uh, thing. I, I will Same risk your thing. ire mm. by suggesting that Francis Drake, I mean, a great towering hero of the nation, yes. uh, not least because Hollywood and <laughs> British movie makers have been so kind to him over the years, um, but there's a case to be made. Uh, uh, but, but as far well, as... Sure. But Nelson, as far as Nelson's concerned... Yeah, um, I mean, Nelson's... I mean, a... He wasn't a slave trader. No. B, he saved our skin against Napoleon at Trafalgar. Yes. And C, the Navy, he didn't actually lead the Navy like good Lord West did, but he was a very, very senior towering figure within it. Uh, the Navy may have protected the old slave trade, but it was absolutely vital to the defeat of the tra slave trade. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, for... Goodness the Royal sakes. Navy spent over 100 years uh, preventing the slave ships from, from traversing the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean. I mean, yeah. absolutely. But, and it's very interesting that even the activists themselves are not claiming a connection between Nelson and the slave trade. They're saying because he's connected to the Royal Navy and the Royal Navy itself is associated with colonialism, uh, therefore it needs to be problematised. I think what that shows is that it's not necessarily about the individual in question, and that any statue, any figure from history can be problematised in this way. Uh, they've even uh, been called for the statue of Mahatma Gandhi, for instance, to be taken down in Manchester because of things that he said about African people. You can always find something. And I think this is the point about judging people from the past in terms of the ethical standards of the present. No one will be safe. No statue will be safe. I mean, I think often of the, the oldest statue in London, which is the one of Queen Elizabeth I on Fleet Street. She was a shareholder in a slave voyage in the 1560s. Mm. Uh, does that mean that we will have to take that down or, or add a plaque to sort of condemn her for that? And that's another interesting point, is the condemnatory aspect of this. We all agree that slavery is appalling. That argument was won uh, in the 19th century. We all, we all know, everyone shares that yeah. view. So then the question, this isn't, I think it's often misinterpreted or misrepresented as a question about whether we're for or against mm. slavery. Mm. No, everyone's against slavery. It's about what the statues mean. And the activists think that these statues are celebrations of the worst aspects of these people's lives. Mm. And most people realise that what these statues actually are, are historical artifacts, mm. a reminder of a society that we used to be and we are no longer. Yeah. Not just about triumphs of the past, but the follies of the past. About yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I think that we both agreed with the good professor who was on um, earlier this week uh, that, that the idea that, that history is edited in some way to leave out the nasty bits and only celebrate the good bits is nonsense. I, you, it's also dangerous. Because it, it, it is absolutely dangerous. It's, it's, but, but to try and rub bits out because yeah. you don't like them 
is anti-academic, anti-intellectual, just plain stupid. And it's from the authoritarian playbook. This is why George Orwell, specifically in 1984, talks about streets being renamed, statues being toppled, right? Mm. It, it, like, this is something that we have to be very wary yeah. of. We have to acknowledge the bad parts of our history yes. as well as the good, and some of that is recorded in the cultural landscape. Sure. Quick one. Um, we... I'm not sure whether you and I have talked on air about Cecil Rhodes and, and, and mm. Oriel College, Oxford, yes. uh, but that was an early example. I know a lot about Colston because I was at Bristol University, not at Oxford, but, but that's a celebrated case. The vice-chancellor of Oxford University, very erudite woman, uh, is reported this morning, apart being nasty about Michael Gove, but that's another story, yeah. saying that universities have got to be open-minded and places of free-flowing thought yes. if they are to remain in the affection of the public, particularly the tax-paying public. Yes. Has the worm turned, or is it beginning to turn? Uh, there's, well, there's actually all sorts of dissent within universities and within the academic staff at universities. The Rhodes example is a good one, because actually a number of academics started saying that because they wouldn't remove the statue, they're not going to even teach uh, the pupils at Oriel College. So it depends on who you talk to uh, within academia. And, uh, but I think it's a knee-jerk reaction, the idea that we should decontextualise the history, oversimplify the history, removing the statue and that, all that, it just kind of goes away. We can, we can whitewash the past and pretend it's not, it's not a problem. But it's interesting with Rhodes as well is that the activist who was leading the campaign in Oxford had said that by seeing the statue, it felt like he was being punched in the face. So I do understand the strength of feeling. People do hate the idea of colonialism and slavery. Well, I do. You know, I think all of this... That, that's not the debate, and that's not the question. The question is about how we approach these monuments and these aspects of the cultural landscape in a sensible adult way and don't just have this knee-jerk thing of we've got to get rid of them and pretend it never happened. Sure. I mean, the other thing that I, I do get angry about mm. is, as in the case of, of, of Cecil Rhodes and now in the case of, of, of Thomas Guy and Guy's Hospital, yeah. is a willingness to take the fruits and spend the money. Well, isn't that interesting? And enjoy the scholarships, and then suddenly to say, oh, historically, philosophically, and intellectually, we've now changed our mind. If I was a trustee of the Rhodes Scholarship Fund, or if I was on the board of Thomas Guy's, uh, or, the, or the, the funding agency, I'd say, right, OK, fine, well, if you don't want us anymore, you don't like us anymore, <laughs> we'll have our money back. Yeah, sure, and, you know, this, the, the, the hospital was set up for the poor, it was a very philanthropic gesture. I understand that he just... I mean, the year before the hospital was founded, he'd mm. sold the shares from the... Uh, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I understand that the money came mm. from the slave trade. No-one's denying that. But, yes, yeah, something positive came out of this. The, the statue isn't there to celebrate his role in the slave trade. It's there to celebrate the inauguration of the hospital yes. and the good that it has done. I mean, it'd be interesting if people did behave like that and say, oh, well, you can, you can go then, can't you? Well, it's an invitation. I, I throw well, it out there. I've the idea out there. I wonder if someone will take it up. <laughs> GB News here to report and to stimulate debate. And it was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.